Hi, I'm Wade Laszlo, and this is another edition of Corrections News and Views. This is the uh, February 2012 update. <clears throat> First thing I'd like to talk about is the contract. Um, the ballots were counted today, February 21st, 2012, for the uh, Hennepin County's offer the detention deputies, tax telecommunicators, and evidence specialists. This contract was overwhelmingly rejected by the members. We want our steps. We want our cost of living raises. So what happens next? Well, first of all, the contract remains in effect in full force. Um, what's going to happen next is the mediator will call the parties back to the table. If an agreement can't be made, we'll be, be able to certify our items for arbitration, and that will be the next step. The next item I would like to talk about is a couple of grievances that are out there. The uh, sick time grievance, as I've mentioned before, is going to arbitration. Um, one of our chief arguments is this idea of a rolling 12 months where you only can use 96 hours of sick time and a rolling 12 as opposed to uh, the contractual use of sick time. Um, an interesting side note is I saw in AFSCME's uh, paper today that uh, they're fighting the county has a rolling 30s um, plan for them if you miss uh, so many hours of sick time in a 30-day period. They're uh, they're disciplining them. They're also fighting that. So it seems to be a, a countywide crackdown on uh, employee use of sick time without having changed the contract. They've come up with these new policies, and uh, <clears throat> we're going to have to fight them on that. Um, there's also a step two grievance hearing being held on February 28th over a holiday issue. A senior deputy put into work uh, Martin Luther King Day. He was um, denied the ability to work that for the extra money. He was assigned that as a day off, and several less senior deputies were uh, given the opportunity to work that day. He grieved that. That's going to uh, step two grievance on the 28th. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how that one turns out. As you know, this whole schedule has been a mess since the, everything's been a mess since the advent of the 28th day schedule. Um, pay issues. As you know, we've had nothing but problems with payroll for a long, long time. Um, for whatever reason, uh, every so often somebody in payroll decides that they need to reinterpret the contract and uh, stop paying things the way that they've been paid, the way they're supposed to be being paid. Um, the most recent was when uh, people worked overtime and they called in sick during the same pay period. Uh, payroll suddenly started changing their uh, overtime to straight time in violation of the contract. Um, that has been straightened out. The Licensed Deputy Association grieved it, and I was complaining about it at the same time, and uh, we were told that that is being straightened out. Um, as you know, the night shift differential, we won that step two grievance when they quit paying the night shift differential. That hasn't entirely been uh, ironed out yet. It appears that uh, while people are being paid for the hours they're working during the shift, a lot of people, especially the uh, power shifters, are not being uh, paid for... Uh, the entire shift, as the contract states. Um, another thing we've discussed before is internal affairs. Um, if you are called to internal affairs, you need to call our attorney, Rob Fowler. His number, 651-287-8883. 651-287-8883. Do not go to internal affairs without calling him. He will go there with you. Um, Article 34 of our contract is very clear. You are entitled by our contract to union representation. He is our union representative, and that uh, I'm not allowing un a union rep there violates our contract and the federal wine garden statutes. Um, something else, too, on uh, President's Day, February 20th, we were conducting shakedowns on the fourth floor of the jail, and a shank was found on an inmate. Um, you guys need to be safe. This was found on the person of an inmate in Quad 11. Um, be very, very careful. Be safe in your jobs. Remember, these guys are uh, creative. They've got 24 hours a day to come up with stuff. And uh, make sure you're doing your pat-downs. Make sure you're checking the inmates. Um, be safe. Safety is our, is our number one concern here. Next, I'd like to branch out into politics on this uh, edition of Correction News and Views. A um, couple of things going through the uh, Minnesota um, legislature right now. There's HF 65, which is a right-to-work bill, 
What they want to do is say that there will be no more closed union shops. Um, you'd be allowed to have a union, but people would have not not the not to be fair share, but not to be a member of all. First of all, let me say, I believe in the labor movement, and if you don't want to be a member of a union, don't take a job at a union shop. Um, and the bill is very vague as to. Uh, Who's going to be represented? For instance, if you opt not to be a full member right now, you pay your, pay your fair share, you're still represented in grievances, you still get the benefits of the contract and everything else. This bill is very vague. It appears that it could possibly be interpreted that you could have 10 people that were a member of a union and 200 people that weren't, and those people would have to be represented by the union. Well, if that's the way that the state wants to look at it, I'd like to have the benefits of roads, snow plows, police and fire service, but you know, I don't want to pay the taxes. So I'll lead to that, leave that to those people who opt to pay the taxes. That's, that's ridiculous. Um, you need to call your legislators and you need to let them know that you are against HF 65. And there's another bill, HF 2033, which they're trying to uh, get in right now, which says that uh, they're supposed to do studies. If this bill passes, they want studies to be done of comparable jobs in the private sector to the public sector and that public employee compensation shall not be greater than private sector compensation for similar jobs. I'd like to find a job where you have shit and piss thrown at you, where inmates can shank you, where inmates can, uh, where people can uh, punch you and assault you, where you can get in all kinds of fights. Um, I'd like to find the private sector job that has that equivalent, and I'll, I'll bet you that it doesn't exist. But uh, as we all know, there's a huge difference between public sector and private sector. While the private sector's wages were going up, 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 we've been frozen, we've been frozen for years. On another political note, uh, many of you are familiar with the Facebook kitten who had the uh, Facebook thing, Kitten for Sheriff. Melissa Hill is her name, and I'd like to share this little story. Um, during the Occupy Minnesota um, protests that were going on, she was arrested for trespassing on public property. Now, as you know, um, she was running as a kitten for sheriff for the sheriff of Hennepin County against our sheriff, Sheriff Rich Stanick. Well, she alleges that Sheriff Rich Stanick was sitting in his SUV watching her before she was arrested for trespassing on public property. She sued Hennepin County. She sued Sheriff Rich Stanick and a settlement was reached. She is no longer trespassed from the government center and they paid her $15,000. Congratulations, Melissa Hill, Facebook kitten. And uh, you didn't see that in the newspaper, did you? Um, MinPi now has our own offices and we're gonna have our general membership meeting on March the 8th at 6 p.m. That's at 2233 Hamlin Avenue North in Roseville. That's uh, 2233 Hamlin Avenue North in Roseville. Um, it's going to be Suite 603. If you come a half hour early at 5.30, food will be provided, hot dogs, chips, pops, the like. Um, so come at 5.30 for a meal. 6 p.m. will be the general membership meeting. It'll be in the lower level conference room. And uh, hope to see you there. Again, this is Correction News and Views. Thank you.